All-American. Born camp, one that Eddie Rawanski and his staff are excited about. We're dancing into the season. We'll have starting lineups and our kickoff when we return to Historic Griggs Field after this. Here's a look at how St. Francis will line up to start things here today against the Tigers. A 4-3-3 lineup, a lot of youngsters in that group, Kevin. Yeah, apart from Renegar that we talked about in the opening clock, I think another one is going to be Lauren Persichetti. Dynamic player. Coach Davies is excited about what she can bring to the game. Sarah McConnell in the back. Tigers with some strength in the back of their lineup as well. Here's a 4-3-3. How about a couple of freshmen in the starting lineup? Freddy Rabwanski up front and Lyles and Maneric. Yeah, talking to this coaching staff, they're really excited about this freshman class. And I think always you have to watch what Hal Hirschfeld is going to bring to the game in midfield. There's Hensley handcuff. Boy, I tell you what, it's hard to not be moved by her emotion in the Sweet 16 when the Tigers advance to the Elite Eight. She made a critical stop and penalty kicks. I know a lot of folks in Clemson Super excited to see the emotion from her. And this team did make a run to the Elite Eight. There's some expectations there. I kind of snuck up on some people, but preseason top eight. And there is a sign of unity. You heard the PA. Sign of respect across both sidelines. You always like to see that before these competitions and certainly around the ACC, you're going to be seeing that a lot throughout the season. St. Francis with possession as we get underway here. Good early pressing by Renee Lyles there, forcing St. Francis for the clearance. Talked about this a little bit in the open. It'll be interesting to see. You know, St. Francis picked fifth in the NEC. They finished fifth in the conference two years ago, just out of the postseason tournament. So they've got some expectations as well, but have not seen the pitch in a couple of seasons after 2020 was canceled due to COVID. Yeah, talking to Coach Davis, apart from five exhibition games, She's going to have 19 players playing their first actual game, seeing their first action this year, which is which is kind of exciting for a young team, but also a little bit of a lack of experience there. Got the ball in the Tigers' third right now, a throw in. It'll be Clemson's possession. Bourne Camp has it and plays it back to Hensley Handcuff. Tigers getting organized. It's a team they want to be aggressive. Both these teams with their line, it's a 4-3-3. You want to try to get the ball forward, certainly. Here's a chance to do that for the Tigers. And a nice play there in goal by Sarah McConnell. Cleared away. It looked like it was just out of Debbie Dudley's reach, and McConnell was aware. Good job coming off her line. And now a corner for Clemson. Corner for the Tigers. A couple of head coaches here that know each other just a little bit. Ellie Davis, who actually played at Clemson before women's soccer was a varsity sport. Interesting to see things come full circle for her as she enters another year at St. Francis. Yeah, she just missed it by three years, didn't she, Clark? Yes, she did. 1991 and the first year for the Tigers, 1994. Here's Eddie Rebwanski. Saw his team get to the Elite Eight a year ago. 11th year as Clemson head coach. How about that last line? The most wins in the history of the program. He got to 100 last year. I know that was a big milestone for him. Yeah, absolutely. He's done a very good job. Kept it off in 2016, coach of the year. McConnell, clearance, and now Tigers have it. 
Renee Guillaume, one of the two captains on this team. Boy, she has seen some things. She is an elder stateswoman for sure. Yeah, she's so good with that left foot, getting forward, providing good service from that wide area. You can see how far those outside backs push up. Team leading 60 appearances for her and a ball forward. Ball sent away out of the back. That's Renninger again. We talked about her being a stalwart of defense. And Tigers will have a throw in the attacking third. You can see Megan Bornkamp just a little ball over the top, testing that back line. Throw played in the box. Opportunity. Hirschfeld had it. Knocked away, and it'll be a corner for the Tigers. You know, one interesting thing about last year on the stat sheet, Clemson, a team that certainly made a deep run in the postseason, one of the best teams in the country. They allowed more corner kicks than they took a year ago already with two here today. Two here today, and I would say watch Megan Bornkamp on this set piece. There she is, number 24. Ball sent in in her direction. She gets ahead on it, but it's knocked aside, and it'll be a goal kick. Reads the ball so well when it's in flight, getting on the end of that. Another look at it. Just a little bit wide there. Bourne camp 5-9, but she plays the ball so well in the air. All on the ground, taken away by the Tigers. Sent forward, now St. Francis with a chance here. Yeah, they've opened up Clemson there a little bit. Shot and saved by handcuff. That's what she does so well, the conference leader in save percentage a year ago. Yeah, that looked like Colette Osby on that shot there. Most impressive. Hensley was able to hold that and not give up a rebound. First shot on frame of the day. Abby Hanks plays it wide to Hirschfeld. St. Francis dropping back a bit defensively. Five on that back line actively right now. Tigers having a hard time seeing it from the middle forward. Yeah, talking to Coach Davies, they will look to press when they turn the ball over. But if Clemson drops into possession like this, you're going to see that 4-3-3 kind of drop into a 4-5-1, pinch, pinch back those wide forwards, sit a little deeper. Into the middle. Hirschfeld's got it. She's dangerous. Up the field and a ball through, knocked away. Chance a little bit high. Renee Lyles with a go at it. Really nicely done there. Find that entry pass into Debbie Dudley there and linking up with Hal Hirschfeld. Here are the two shots. First the team in black. And now the Tigers' response. Just a little high by Lyles there. Way down wide, this is the Tigers throw in. Long Just throw by there. Renee Guion. This is Lyles, that's why she's up there in the front. And that's gonna be a goal kick there. A couple of balls forward, they've shown some confidence in Lyles. Yeah, really good awareness there from Guion. She has a pretty decent throw, whipped it behind that back line. You can see Renee Lyles, 5'5 five, five forward from Atlanta. She was the 5A player of the year in Georgia. You see the breakdown there for the roster. Nine freshmen, 10 newcomers. Eddie Brawanski and his staff very high on this group of freshmen and one transfer. We'll be seeing a lot of them tonight, I would imagine. This is Hirschfeld. 
In the air, and it's Lyles gets it in the air off the foot, and it is in. Nice That's a heck of a ball from Hal Hirschfeld. Just drops it right over that back line for Lyles to pounce on. Great awareness there, Lyles out-muscled Renninger and then is able to drop it right over the keeper, and she had help following in behind in case it was a bit short. Yeah, Sarah McConnell was just a little hesitation coming off her line. That's a terrific ball from Hirschfeld, though. Heck of a way to start your career if you're Lyles. Watch her win this ball. That's fantastic body control right there. Well, if there are worse ways to open up your account. <laughs> no doubt. Freshman from Atlanta making her presence felt. Yeah, I think it's deserved. It. She has shown she can get him behind on a couple of occasions here already. We're only nine minutes in. It's a team, too, that has some experience on the attack. You look at some of the numbers from a year ago. You had three players returning that had 17 points for this team. And so it's not like all of your scoring was gutted. But to have two freshmen up front, you see the trust that Eddie Rabwanski has put in that group. Yeah, and what I've been impressed with with Clemson in the last few years is they really spread it out. A number of players are contributing, getting forward, chipping and assists, scoring goals. Tough there, Lauren Persichetti wins the ball back after being trapped. Ball through, chased down by Bourne Camp, and it'll be handcuffed with it now. The red flash of St. Francis down a goal here and looking to keep it there. Hirschfeld. Dispossessed, and it'll be a throw in for St. Francis. Really nice idea from Renee Lyles there. She knew she wasn't going to be able to do much with that ball under pressure, just tried to kill it for Hal Hirschfeld. Didn't quite link up. This is Osby. And the ball ends up at the feet of Bourne Camp in the back. Merrick up ahead to Lyles. Taken away. Hirschfeld wins the ball back. Jackson Moeller sent into the middle. Here's Harper White. Near side, this is Hirschfeld. Chance to play it in and does to the back corner. A little too long. There. Hirschfeld making a good run out of midfield, breaking that back line. Good idea here from Hirschfeld. And just on side was Hanks. A little bit too long for her. McConnon clears it away. Hirschfeld again wins the ball in the air. Tigers keeping the pressure on up a goal. Taken away and a foul. A little bit aggressive for Harper White there. Yeah, maybe a little unlucky. Did a great job of tracking back. She thinks she clipped the player winning that. Claire Miko, sophomore from Ohio. This is Alex Martinez. The side through a double team. Into the middle. Tiger's going to play safely from the back and now through the feet of handcuff. And these are the moments where St. Francis is dropping in a bit, try to find that entry pass so a player's able to turn.
says Hanks. Here's Moeller, the senior. Into the middle, now across. Inside, a shot deflected high and taken out of the air by McConnell. Tigers again aggressive just outside the 18. Yeah, they've shown some good patience. They scored the early goal, but still willing to go forward, attack, try to create opportunities. Good job. A little pressing. pressure. How about this? As easy as it gets. You know, I was just thinking, City Maneric, her work rate has been exceptional, hasn't it? And she's rewarded right there. Sydney Maneric picks the pocket of Sarah McConnell, and just like that, it's 2 0. Yeah, she lifted her head to look for the, the outlet, look for the pass. Ball kind of got caught under her feet. And the closing pace from Maneric. It's a good tackle. Well, she did close quickly there. It seemed like one of those you see all the time where keeper's able to get away right at the last possible second, but just a one errant touch. She's proven to be a quick, pretty quick player, hasn't she? Just getting a glimpse of Maneric here early. How about the two freshmen put in the lineup, scoring goals, 5-4 out of Huntersville, North Carolina. Huff High School in the Charlotte area. So Atlanta and Charlotte representing well here. Tigers back line pushing forward. That's a great ball through from Bourne Camp onto the wing. Guillaume plays it in. Yeah, she just threaded the needle to get that ball there, didn't she? Good aggressive physical defense on the back line. Let's see if the Red Flash can respond. They cannot. Harper White, one of the very experienced players for this Clemson team. You know, she's kind of played along that back line, outside back, center back. But I, I'm liking her playing this role, the six. She snuffed out some passes, had good possession. Hirsch fell. Ball sent away. Yeah. Going to bring it back. Here's that aggressive tackle there. Yeah, you can see Abby Hanks just cutting inside, penetrating on the dribble. Front three for Clemson. Been pretty active here in the opening 16 minutes. Hanks, a junior that played quite a bit in the spring. Well, we talked about this already, but in men's and women's soccer last year, it really was two seasons with a spring conclusion because you had several teams, not the entire country, but several that played a portion of their schedule in the fall, and then you had the spring. Well, of course, you had some athletes turning pro after the fall or choosing not to play in the spring, and so rosters looked very different all around the country, and it created opportunities for players like Hanks to get additional minutes. Yeah, they lost a player like Mariana Speckmeyer to, to the pro league after graduation. Yeah, Speckmeyer down in for the Venezuelan national team, as well as the Washington Spirit. This is back line. You mentioned the patience. They really have done a good job not forcing the issue but being precise when they choose to go. And St. Francis has been very patient. You can see they're cutting off those passing seams. 
making it difficult for Clemson to find that entry pass. When Bourne Camp stepped forward and slotted the ball to Guion, that's the type of penetrating pass they'll need out of the back. This is Hanks. So Hirschfeld taken away. Good work right there. They're defending the red flash in a flash up the field. Hanks has it back. She and Moeller. Nicely done. Little nutmeg there from Abby Hanks. Retain possession. Forward on the wing. Bit of a miscommunication and a good job there by Persichetti, even though she couldn't keep it. Here comes the freshman, Lyles. I like the recovery. Oh, the give and go. She almost got it back, Kevin. Yeah, nicely done. Starting to get a little bit of an idea of why this Clemson staff was so high on this freshman class. Check this out again. The chemistry already in midseason form. Yeah, I like the creativity too. She knew she couldn't slot it for two on the ground. Just lifted off the ground a little bit. Third corner kick for Clemson. Just over 18 minutes in. That's a good ball. Guion finds Bourne Camp. Well, we talked about it before the game, didn't we? Such a good target. But what a delivery. It's hit with pace. It's accurate. It's far enough away from the goalkeeper. She's not tempted to come out for it. Second time, Guion has found Bourne Camp's head. The first time, it went wide. The second time, right in the back of the net. Here's another look. Good driven ball. Bourne Camp makes no mistake this time. Look at her get up over the ball, attack it, knot it down. I'll tell you what, Kevin, if you're the red flash right now, we're going to have some substitutions here. Clemson shuffling some bodies in and out. It feels like that's something where you, you've got to find Bourne Camp. You know that she's going to make plays and set pieces. You've already had a couple of corners where they found her. I feel like she got a pretty clean run at that where somebody's got to check her to some degree. Yeah, somewhat uncontested, and, and that's an experience thing as well, isn't it? Another opportunity here just onto the field. That's, that's Leah need Morris. The, need the veteran players like Renninger to step up, take command at the back. Tigers waste no time here with this hockey-style line change. Good deflection there by Renninger. And now a fourth corner kick for Clemson. Here you see the numbers. St. Francis with nary an opportunity so far. To the back post! Look at this. A lot of bodies with a chance there. And they're going to give Clemson another corner. I don't know who supposedly touched it. Would have had to be Savannah Shoemaker. That looked like Clemson's uh, Caitlin Smith, the other center back, coming forward to get in on it. Back post again. And deflected at a goal. Up again. She finishes that one on the full volley. Once again, Bourne Camp, a clean run into the box. And from head to toe, she's scoring goals off set pieces, Kevin. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a big believer in the, the goal scorer gets the credit, certainly. It's a quality finish. But I can't say enough about the delivery. Look at that driven ball. And I got to say, she was checked that time. She just muscled her way into position just anticipates it so where she has a good sense of where that ball is going to drop. Already a quarter of the way to her season total from last year when she led the Tigers with eight goals. Some subs here for the red flash as well. Allie Heckman. 
Checks in Lauren Pyle, Paige Theobald checking out. Malia and McKenna Morris in for the Tigers. Caroline Conti, Fran Stables went in that last time. So Eddie Rawanski sums out four of his 10 starters and doesn't miss a beat. There's Malia Morris, has it taken away. On the wing, this is Coletta Osby. And she has it taken away from her by White. Yeah, again, Harper White doing a good job of tracking and breaking things up. She has really grown over the last year. Yeah, I think what you're seeing, Qual, too, is a, a, two teams that are in a little bit different stage of their development. Clemson's very young and, uh, I'm sorry, very experienced. They've got some good, exciting young players, but they've got a lot of experience across the field. And St. Francis, just a young team. They will grow as the season goes on. I was talking to Coach Davis about one of her main goals tonight was improve their possession from where they were the first two exhibition matches. Liam Morris in the middle, her sister McKenna playing up front. Here's Moeller. Ball in to the back side and on top of the goal. Here's another look at some good defending. Tigers with four goals, but they hadn't forgotten defense. Look at Harper White. Yeah, she gets enough of a shoulder on her to slow the play down. Tenacious winning the ball back, no foul. Really disciplined. Tigers with a chance here, three on three. Now St. Francis collects. Again, Moeller. Long legs from Moeller, she's able to Get a lot of deflections on balls that are aiming through. Yeah, she's nice. able to cut that out there. Oh, nice give and go. Here's Morris into the box. And cleared away. That was almost a give and go and give and go. Yeah, I tried to pick out Caroline Conti there. Here's Conti right in the middle. Ball through. Well defended. This is Moeller. Up ahead, Malia Morris. Morris in the corner, and that will be a corner kick. Corner for the Tigers. Here's a nice passing on the last possession for Clemson. And here's the corner. We'll go back to that. Cleared away. Clemson with a throw in. That was a quick corner, quick trigger there. Now six for Clemson. Yeah, they elected to go short on that one. And you know, it's early in the season, so you're going to have a couple of set pieces you may want to take a look at. Long shot saved. Certainly not for uh, the lack of quality on the other deliveries. McConnell sure handed to take that one away. It's one of her best clearances there. Clemson relentless. That back line. The red flash, absolutely no time to dilly-dally with the ball. Here's White. Moeller on the right flank, and then she'll get it back. Born Camp. Here's side, Guion. This is Morris. She's got it. A casualty. And deflected. Substitution for Clemson. 
Tigers with another substitution. Here's what just happened. Take a look at some nifty footwork by McKenna Morris. Yeah, nice little cut. Lane St. George in, and Guion will step aside. A well-deserved breather for her. McKenna Morris. And just a little bit too strong on the give and go that time. A good idea by Conti. Yeah, I think McKenna recognized that she got a touch on that. She was probably in an offside position coming back from the corner. Already seen several of the newcomers for the Tigers. There's that full list, Lyles and Manerick. Their names have been called already. St. George and Stables have both come in the game. Smith as well. These are all going to be impact players to some degree for this team. See Cassidy Lindley in there, a transfer. So nine true freshmen plus a transfer for Eddie Rabwanski here in 2021. Well, I think the early signs very promising for him. Long ball. At the right side. Renninger tracks it down. It'll be a throw, but again the pressure. Nowhere for St. Francis to go but sideways so far. It's been uh, pretty relentless here early, hasn't he? You got a young front line pressing, very active. Then you bring in the likes of Morris and, and Conti. Speaking of Conti, she's got it in the middle. Now to White. Looking through. Morris couldn't quite get there. That's a clever through ball from Harper White. Caitlin Smith, the freshman. Britt from New Forest, England. Yeah, she's certainly shown a lot of maturity here early. Five feet, 10 inches. McKenna Morris on the left side, going to play into the middle. Got a chance here at the top. Oof, deflected high. Nice job by McConnell or the Tigers could have had goal five. Yeah, and what was really nice about that buildup is as soon as the overlap was developing from St. George, drug a player out, allowed McCorse to cut inside. Whew. That was a rope. That's a great save. McConnell is recognizing she's not going to be able to hold that rather than give up a rebound. Just parries it away. Second save for McConnell. Here's another corner. And again, found Bourne Camp. All cleared away. St. George with possession, and then a ball in a bit wide and long. Yeah, Bourne Camp looked like she judged that right again. Good crowd out here. Boy, it was some rain earlier during the pregame and threat of storms throughout. I think there's still a chance of rain, but. Students on campus now. Some men's soccer players taking in action. Nice crowd here on a Thursday night at Historic Griggs Field. Near side, nicely done. Persichetti and Smith going at it. The ball taken away by the Tigers. Chance to counterattack if they choose to do so. Yeah, and look at St. George with a big overlapping run again. That's twice she's come forward. That's a good un unselfish overlapping run. And Kevin, you've coached freshmen. That's not automatic that freshmen just know to do that, especially early in a season like this. Yeah, she's come from obviously a, a good program, good club program, but some of that is what Coach Radwanski and this Clemson staff like to do. They like those outside backs to get forward. You may not always be rewarded with the return pass, but it does so much because it pulls other players, opens up passing seams. Nice tackle there. 
the St. George. Horn can't forward. Can Morris catch it? She cannot. Here's a top 10 poll. Tigers an appearance here and a lot of familiar names. Florida State number one, Santa Clara. Clemson knows all too well what they can do as the Tigers were bounced from the postseason last year uh, by them. But you look up and down. These are teams that Clemson's going to find on the schedule, including number nine, Texas A&M in the non-conference. Yeah, absolutely. You've got five ACC teams now. Correct me if I'm wrong, Clark. I, I don't think Clemson plays Duke and Virginia in the regular season, but they could certainly see them in the ACC tournament, and you have to think they'll be in the postseason. Got a sneak peek at Duke on Friday in an exhibition. But you're right, at North Carolina, Florida State. Those are the two games against those other four ACC teams in the regular season. And then at Texas A&M, which is coming quickly a week from Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be a great out-of-conference test early for this Clemson team. You've got that. You've got at Georgia, South Carolina. This is a team that's got some early tests. And they want to be tested because this is a team now, as we've said, with expectations. Well, talking to the staff the last couple of years, I know they felt like a, an appearance in the Elite Eight was right on the horizon. They reached that pinnacle last year. They're ready to take the next step. Malia Morris sent away. Good. Nice shot right there. Yeah, good pace on that, but also you could see she was shaping that into the corner. Looked like it was going wide initially. Conan has been under siege throughout. That's her third save. Had a rough beginning, but she's seemed to settle in. You mentioned she was a bit unsure of herself the first 10 or 15 minutes. It may have cost her a couple of saves, but the Tigers are able to turn into goals. Looks like eighth corner kick. Yeah, she's settled in, and she's made some good decisions on whether do I hold or do I parry. Morris, bit of a log jam there. Conti and Fran Stables, the freshman, occupying the same space. Red flashes take advantage. Let's see if they can set something up in the attacking third, and not to be. Coming up on 11 and a half minutes to go. In this first half, it has been all Clemson. Four goals, three different Tigers. Megan Bornkamp, the leading scorer last year for Clemson, got off to a good start here in 2021 with a pair of goals within mere minutes of each other. Smith. Here's Moeller playing forward now. Been on the back line throughout the first half. And Grace Wagner doing a good job getting involved there, changing point of attack. Offside, Offside called there against Malia Morris. She had six goals a year ago, and you can see she's got an eye for a good opportunity. A little bit antsy. Yeah, just a slightly off on the timing of a run to get him behind. With Clemson winning every ball in the midfield right now. And the ones they don't win, they immediately get. Yeah, Fran Stables, good work right there. Really tenacious. Stables, another one of those freshmen. 
out of Manchester, England. Got a couple of Brits on the recruiting side. One played for Chelsea. And Fran Stables played for Manchester United. Smith, of course, from Chelsea. Here's Morris in the middle. He does the first English player Clemson's had since Sandy McIver graduated. That's right. Oh, nicely oh. done. The combination. Conti finds, look like McKenna Morris on the back post there. McKenna Morris, if you can't use the posts, use the keeper. The pace on the delivery from Caroline Conti. Nice job by Conti. There you see her. South Carolina native from nearby Greenville, a junior. Seven goals last year. This is her 40th appearance in a Clemson uniform. Pretty impressive for just a sophomore campaign. Our sophomore. Here's Wagner. Playing it to the near side. This is Emma Lerner. With some space to work. Morris. And about face. Looking for a shot. She may have it. Double deflection. Back to Conti. Morris in a dangerous spot right here. Good discipline from that South St. Francis team there, not committing a foul in that situation, being patient. Smith, again with some room. Out wide, Emma Lerner, the freshman from Ohio. Threw on the ground, deflected, and a goal kick. And that's one of the things I like so much about Caroline Conti's game. She's always looking to combine with other players, bring other players into the, into the game. You see it there. She knew she couldn't turn in that situation. Looks like she was just trying to drop the ball. There you see Grace Wagner, junior from Cary, North Carolina. Good to see her out on the field. She did not appear wow, due to injury. injury for her sophomore season. Her 13th career appearance for the Tigers. Nice to see her back after a long absence. Yeah, it's certainly one of those players that her teammates look up to for her resilience, the ability to bounce back. Brings a lot of experience to that midfield. Well done. Tigers a chance now. Leah Morris. One on one. Deflected away. That's again good defending twice in a row. Yeah, so tempting in those situations to stab for the ball, risk committing a foul. Tigers in control here. Went up on six minutes to play before the half. Is going to take care of possession here? They've done it the whole half. 
sun sets here at historic Griggs Field. On the wing, freshman learner. Combo, Wagner with it. Nicely done, Morris. Across, sister, sister, and another goal for the Tigers. McKenna finds Malia. That was the moment, though, Quark. Did you see the ball from Caroline Conti in the buildup? Just the one touch pass to, to open up that St. Francis back line. It's a very similar ball that we saw the last goal. Malia Morris <laughs> bends it right around, and McKenna with the misdirect. Good touch from Conti there to get her in behind. The ball was shaped across the back line, away from the goalkeeper. Outstanding delivery. A 6-0 lead for Clemson. Second goal for Morris. She and Bornkamp having a field day here in the first half. A little bit of rain has fallen here, but again, the sun's set in the distance. It's a neat sky right now. Oof. Boy, a difficult save there. Sacrifice in the body, McConnon. Big time save from McConnon with the one on one. Caroline Conti there. McKenna Morris into the middle. Wagner, goal. Grace Wagner getting on the scoreboard. Nice composed finish, finding the far corner. And I tell you what, look at her teammates mob her. The bench is going crazy as well. All the way from goal, Hensley handcuff sprints down. They know what it means for Grace Wagner, not just to be here, but Kevin, this is her first career goal. Yeah, look at the composure she has there, Quark. Receives it, prepares it with the first touch. Slots it in the corner. First career goal for the junior. All kinds of injury issues. You said the word resilience. That's exactly the, the word to describe what Grace Wagner brings to the table. And now she brings a goal to the stat sheet. All across, headed out, but again, Clemson with a player in the area. Oh, nice tackle. Well done there by Bella Pesh. Red Flashes took the first shot of the game on goal. Yeah, had a good opportunity there early. Clemson has kind of flexed their attacking muscles here. Yeah, Tigers had a couple before that that were not on goal, but right now the difference, 16 to one and 11 to one shots on frame. Some relentless at all three levels. And the red flashes just have not been able to get anything going. There again, ball away.
Across the back. Harper White. Seen her make an impact already today. The defensive end, Caitlin Smith. And you can see how, how wide Caitlin Smith and Bourne Camp pull apart in moments of possession. Harper White playing that holding mid roll, just dropping in. Tough touch there by St. George, a freshman from Seattle. Bourne Camp. Back to handcuff. Final 75 seconds of the first half. One minute remaining. Morris, 30 seconds. Down the wing, Bourne Camp. In on the ground, deflected, and cleared away in a foul call. Yeah, the assistant referee on, down there in the corner, saw a little contact. I think that's the right decision. I may have called offside right there. Ten, Couldn't have nine, been by much. Eight, seven, That'll be how the five, half will end. Four, three, two, one. Well, solid first half for Clemson, and that is an understatement. A 7 nothing lead at the half. Tigers really good in this role under Eddie Rowanski. We'll chat with the head coach for the Tigers in just a moment. Still got a half to go. The Tigers. Haven't scored seven goals in five years, and now they're setting their sights on that total against Presbyterian back in 2016 of nine. Yeah, and I think what is impressive with that quark is they had so many different players getting on the score sheet. Five different players in the first game. It's a pretty good start to the year. A few different starters on the field here in the second half for Eddie Rabwanski. You see in one goal, I won't say she's taken the night off, but Hensley Handcuffs done a lot of moving the ball side to side. She's only had one shot to deal with so far, and she has dealt with it well. Clemson will have the ball here. Start the second half. We've had a change in goal. Emma Sawich, a freshman from McMurray, Pennsylvania, getting a chance here for the Red Flashes. Yeah, I think that's a good call. I was thinking about uh, the message that Coach Davis would have for her team at halftime, and I think I would tell them two things. First of all, see a little bit more fight on set pieces, a willingness to compete for some of those balls, and then secondly, it's an opportunity of growth. Try to continue to work on the little things. You're not going to fix everything overnight, but certainly you can uh, increase your possession. Ellie Davis with Clemson ties. She played club soccer at Clemson from 1988 to 91. And an early test for the new keeper, and Sawich deals well. That's a good save early. Ball forward. McKenna Morris playing on the back line right now for Eddie Rawanski as he continues to shuffle some bodies around. Here's Hirschfeld. To the middle, Hirschfeld with a run. He couldn't find her. Hanks, they send it all the way around. This is Morris on the wing. Low and deflected away. Good delivery, a lot of pace on that ball. She really whipped it across the face of the goal. Over. 
Ball high and over the net. And that'll be a goal kick now for the Red Flashes. Here's the early test for Sawich. Looks like Maneric trying to get her second. Maneric got the second goal for the Tigers when she picked the pocket of Sarah McConnon. As cleanly as you'll ever see that done. Here's White. I beg your pardon, Debbie Dudley right there, sophomore midfielder from Utah. And you got to look at Sid Dawson there. Sydney Dawson got a lot of time as a center back last year. She's come in for Bourne camp here at the break. We talked about Guillaume, a captain. She's the other one. We really didn't say a lot about her because she does her job so well on the back line. But you mentioned it. She earned a great deal of respect from her teammates the way that she played last year. Started 16 Corner. matches and is making her 56th appearance as a Clemson Tiger here tonight. Another corner kick for Clemson. This is St. George. Quickly gets it in. <laughs> Dudley deflected away. Looked like Renager defending that one. Putting it out of danger. The back line for St. Francis and I has been just completely under siege from the moment that the game began, but she has thwarted a number of attacks that might have been dangerous had she not been there. Yeah, she really has. And that's a tall order because you've just seen wave after wave of Clemson attack coming from those substitutions as well. Just fresh legs coming in off the bench. Nifty ball handling by Hirschfeld. And she goes down, and this is probably going to be a foul on her, and it will be. Foul. Ball against the Tigers. Couldn't quite complete that run, and she may have gotten popped in the mouth. No big deal. And I'm okay with the foul in that situation. It's in the final third and taking chances. Hirschfeld, third team all ACC a year ago, all freshman team in 2019. Very good player who's made quite an impact here tonight. Up ahead, ball through and cleared away. Ella Hooser had a chance there. Renee Lyles tried to connect with her. Throw in the red flashes. They'll play it from the back. It's a nice, it's a good ball from Solich. Very well done there, but dispossessed from behind. Lane St. George again defending. Here's Lyles. Taken away. This is Leanna Chu. That's a good little glimpse of what St. Francis is capable of doing there, though. Ali Heckman also in the mix there. McKenna Morris. Lyles high into the box. And now a shot and way up high. Off the tennis center. Cameraman Sander Sullivan getting a glimpse of the ball up close and personal. There he is. Like a ninja in the night. Tigers up 7-0 here. They've not stopped attacking. This is a, a really good thing about having a lot of young players. That you can stick them into a situation like this, and it's very easy for them to get opportunities to build confidence. 
Yeah, it's all about experience and confidence at this stage of the season. Particularly when you look at that upcoming schedule for Clemson. Hirschfeld with it. Caitlin Smith. You can see what Coach Rathlonski was talking about at halftime. It feels like they're a better team when they move the ball. Clemson taking less than two or three touches here in possession. And right on cue, a turnover. And a great tackle. But corralled again by Heckman. Yeah, Abby Hanks just feisty in that situation. Looking to give good pressure. Off the foot of the freshman St. George, a throw in, the red flash. It's a good opportunity for St. Francis, too, you mentioned sort of the idea that you're down seven. Can't really try to get that back all at once, so it's more about just trying to improve something from now until the end of the match tonight. Yeah, you know, they'll regroup. They'll have uh, Duquesne in their next match, but you can learn some things from an experience like this, and some deficiencies will be pointed out. Well, it's a fun summer for former Clemson goalkeeper Kaylin Sheridan. You see there the note. Nobody played for Clemson women's soccer had ever won a gold medal. She was one of three goalkeepers on the roster for Canada. The Canadian team rolled through unexpectedly and earned a gold medal. That's a cool moment for Kaylin and for her teammates there north of the border. Yeah, and Nick, uh, Nick, the women's national team in the process. It's a big summer for them. And yeah, they were heavy underdogs in the semifinal match against the Americans and then in the final as well. Whenever I think about Kaylin Sheridan, I feel like she was the first goalkeeper the last several years that's really kind of gotten it rolling here at Clemson. You know, followed up with Sandy McIver and now you have Hensley Handcuff. They've had quite a few good net minders here recently. Shot wide there, and a lot of the credit for that is Siri Molinax, who, there you see her. She's no stranger to Olympic competition for North Carolina Tar Heel, and she has been here every step of the way with Eddie Rawanski and has done a remarkable job setting that tone that you talked about. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, she has a silver medal of her own from the 2000 Olympics. Uh, she's certainly no stranger to the ACC soccer either because she played at North Carolina. It really is no substitute for having somebody on staff with that type of high-level experience, both collegiately and at the Olympic level, and for her longevity here on the staff, where she's been here all 11 seasons with Eddie Rubwanski, there's a comfort level with her and the other goalkeepers. And like you said, they've been able to find one in every group and really allow them to blossom. And boy, Handcuff came on so strong at the end of last year. She was outstanding in the postseason. Nicely done by Hal Hirschfeld. Yeah, certainly, Qualk. And I think that's one thing that any goalkeeper would tell you. They could love the campus. They could love the head coach, love the players. But they want to know what it the goalkeeper coaches like. Can they build a relationship? Can that coach make them better? And when you have someone of Siri Mullinex's pe pedigree on staff, it speaks All volume time. about your program. And how strong is that bond between goalkeeper and goalkeeper coach? Well, let's just say it's called the goalkeeper union, and I don't know any more than that because I was a field player. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, Siri, there you see Siri yucking it up on the bench. One of the first calls that Kaitlyn Sheridan made right after she won the gold medal was to Siri back here from Tokyo 
that shows you the bond that they have and the fact that Kaylin, you saw there, she's not been at Clemson for five years now, but still has a relationship there that's that's grown over time. And you mentioned uh, Sandy McKeever as well. She's playing pro uh, for Everton. Kaylin Sheridan's at Gotham FC, and so not only – for national teams with McKeever with uh, England and Sheridan with Canada, but also on the pro circuit, you've got a couple of goalkeepers with Clemson rings. That was pretty awesome. Ball in, deflected away. Well, I tell you what, this has been a really good few minutes for Sawitch coming in cold off the bench. She has acquitted herself quite well in goal. I love the decision to come and get that. She realizes she's going to be under pressure, may not be able to hold it. She elects to punch. Gets it out of danger. Super ball in by Smith. Look at this. Zero hesitation. She comes to make a play for it. Does well. Into the middle. Deflected. A scramble. And again, saw it's able to gobble it up. Looks like that freshman connection of Lyles and Manerick again. You talked about the effort level of Maneric. Boy, she was tenacious. There's no reason she should have gotten to that ball, and yet she did. Here again, the high work rate. Yeah, nicely done. Lyle's able to force a quick clearance. Look at Hirschfeld there. And I think that's what I like so much about it. When you have a player like that, it really is infectious, isn't it? You see one player working their tail off to press like that. For Sacchetti up ahead, and it's deflected, and the Tigers have it. That's the best chance that Red Flashes have had in quite some time in the attacking third, but Clemson just flooded back and was able to snuff it out. This team does have some awfully good tone setters for that freshman group. It, Hirschfeld being one, certainly Guion. We saw her early. Here's Lyles. I beg your pardon, that's I think that Hanks. was Abby Hanks. It there. was Abby Hanks. Hirschfeld played back, and again, it'll start on the back line for Clemson to McKenna Morris. A lot of room to maneuver. This is Maneric. Deflected, and it'll be just corner kick territory there. Good effort defensively by St. Francis. This is Renninger. And here's another look. Speaking of defense, how about Sawich? Look at this save. Yeah, she's really shown zero hesitation coming off her line. Very confident, decisive. High, deflected, and that's going to be another corner for the Tigers. You know, in every single one of those plays, too, Renninger is in there. Yeah. It seems like every single, no matter if it's on the wing or in the middle, she is there defensively to help her keep her. We talked about it just after the break. You want to exert yourself in a physical nature, compete a little bit more in those set pieces. They've certainly done that. It's McKenna Morris. Clemson will have it back. They'll regroup. 61 minutes gone here at Historic Riggs Field. William Quackenbush, Kevin Kennedy with you. 7-0, Tigers. With the red flashes and down the wing. Just no angles to deliver the ball right now. Yeah, that was a really good picture of the counter press from Clemson. As soon as they turned it over, immediately applied pressure, forced the turnover, get the ball back, keep the game of the, the tempo of the game high. Well, you talked about it right from the Opening kickoff, Ellie Davis said, we want to counterattack. We want to make sure that we fall back defensively 
but that we press when we can. And so far, they just have not really had that opportunity. Cle Clemson's been taking care of the ball, but also when they have turned it over, they've been able to scramble back. Yeah, that, that's all predicated by you have to have some good possession in those moments. And they've not been able to, to string together a lot of consecutive passes and keep Clemson on their back foot. Clemson has had the luxury of controlling the tempo of this game. And they really have done it from the back line. That ball's through on the ground and cleared away. Whenever they've needed to settle, they've been able to do it on the back without a whole lot of bother coming from the red flashes. That was nice defending there. Ellie Aston, junior from the UK. Into the middle, this is Dudley. Through, shot, deflected. And this will be a, either a throw or a corner. Yeah, that's a good little slip pass from Debbie Dudley there. And I like the mindset from Lyles. She's just gonna hit it one time. Learns herself a corner. Throw in, right there on the border. I thought it was gonna be a corner myself. Look at the pressure there. Force the turnover. Here's Smith. Nice ball work that time by Sidney Dawson. Here's Morris. In on the ground. Back and deflected. Again, that freshman combination, Menerik and Lyles, and that ball's through and grabbed by the keeper. Yeah, I love the idea for Morris. She gets penetration and cuts it back. I thought Menerik was going to hit it one time. Tried to pick out Renee Lyles. Hirschfeld aggressively going after possession there. And again, it's it's the tone that was set from the beginning for Clemson that even when you're not there, your presence is still felt. Nice job here by Lyles. Two on two. Uh, clever little step over there. She gets the return. Back to Maneric. Taken away. Here's Hirschfeld. That is just experience in reading the game. You could see the mistouch. Hirschfeld jumped on it. Saw the opportunity there. Makes no mistake in the finish. Hirschfeld got a goal earlier. Look at this. Just the errant touch. Johnny on the spot. First goal of the season for Hal Hirschfeld. Those are moments that St. Francis will grow in over the year. You know, your, your second or third, fourth game of the year, you won't make some of those mistakes. But the awareness from Hirschfeld to pounce on that. I got to say, Kevin, that looked a lot easier live than it did on replay because not only did Hirschfeld have to take the ball, she had to kind of settle it, deke it to the right, and then with pressure, get it around the keeper. Yeah, have the composure to finish it. So, <laughs> Manerik, when she pressed the goalkeeper, one off McCon and an easier finish, <laughs> open goal. Hirschfeld still had Sawich to beat. 23-2 in shots. Lyles makes it 24, just up high. And again, just not a lot the Red Flashes can do to stop the onslaught right now, except just throw some bodies in the way. Well, it's been pretty hot in Clemson lately, Quark, but, but tonight we had that little rain shower. It's cooled off. I think that has lent itself to Clemson being able to play a very sustained high-tempo game. 
That's a good point. It's been in the 90s. Even earlier today, it was around 90 degrees. But right now, it's maybe a little muggy, but it's not nearly that warm. 76 degrees. Yeah, they've certainly been able to keep the tempo high. Oh, nicely done. Good defending there. Nice little battle on the sideline. Clever from St. George. Like Lyles needed a helper. It does seem like a little bit frustration set in for the red flashes when they get it. Because a lot of these balls, they don't really seem to have a, a target. You know, they're just trying to get the ball forward as much as they can and hope somebody finds it. Yeah, so they need two things to happen. They need that center forward to be able to pin the ball and buy them a little bit of time, have some players get forward, support her. Clemson has been so quick with the pressure, able to dispossess her or cut out that pass. It's a nice opportunity to run. But then there again, right into the waiting arms of the keeper. Yeah, I think that's one of those moments where it's a low probability ball. She's probably better off cutting it back, letting some players get forward. Tell you, Quark, from just watching 70 minutes tonight, I think Caitlin Smith is going to be a big player for this Clemson team moving forward. She uh, seems wise beyond her years, just a freshman there along that back line. Well, she has the size and frame, too, Kevin. Yeah, and she seems so composed on the ball. She's not in a hurry to go forward. Number four, Harbor White. And number 17, Emma Lerner. There you see some substitutions for Clemson here in the final 21 minutes and change. Good job well done. All the players that went out. That was a young lineup that started the second half, Freddie Rawanski, and got the one goal, but for the measure of play, they acquitted themselves quite well. Absolutely. Emma Lerner, Harper White, Megan Bornkamp, Franz Stables in. Hoser, Hirschfeld, Dudley, and Hanks. i tell you, Harper White just picked up right where she left off, didn't she? She sure did. Just a, just a crushing tackle in midfield there to win the ball back. <laughs> yeah, we didn't talk about her earlier as one of the tone setters, but we should have. Because she carries that type of presence on the back line for Clemson. Now some more subs in. Tigers going with Malia Morris, Jackson Moeller, Mackenzie Duff, freshman from St. Louis in there, and Caroline Conti also back. And it looked like we had Paige Theobald checking in for St. Francis. Saw a good bit of Theobald in the first half. And handcuffed back there again. Number two, McKenna Morris. And number 10, Renee Lyles. Also, substitution for the red flash. Yeah, Theobald in for Reality Jessel. And leaving the match, number 10, Reality Jessel. Tigers had seven goals at the half. 
They've not scored nine since 2016. Surely that's not the thing that's in the back of anybody's mind, but stat nerds like me keep an eye on those things. I think Coach Davies had a, a pretty clear message at halftime to, to come out and continue fighting. They've been more competitive on set pieces. They've defended the corners at Clemson has won the second half much better. They seem a bit more tenacious. And they've also got a doing a better job of staying compact in midfield. They haven't been open quite as easily as they were in the first half. A little bit high that shot attempt. Conti right off the chain link fence. And you know what I got to say? A lot of credit goes to Emma Sawich as we see a change in goal for Clemson. Here's that shot. Now Caroline Conti taking a shot from distance. I think that's a testament to how effective St. Francis has done. They forced Clemson in the second half to take a lot of shots from outside the area, apart from Hirschfeld's goal. There's Allie Lynch. A 5'8 freshman from Los Angeles. She replaces handcuff. Handcuff preseason all ACC selection. And again, one of the stars of the postseason last year for Eddie Rowanski. Kinsey Duff sends it. Across. Moeller going to have a throw in. You're right, a much more physical performance from St. Francis here. Clemson hasn't gotten into the attacking third nearly as easily. Oh, nicely done there. A nice little nutmeg there. That's one of the things we talked about, right? Talking about 19 players who have not been in. A, they've had a couple of scrimmages, but not an actual big time college game on the road. Young players have to grow into that. And against this caliber of team, too. That's a tall order early in the season for an inexperienced team. And this is a team, too, St. Francis, that. Got a first place vote in the NEC and was picked to finish fifth. And that's something you certainly can hang your hat on because if you're Ellie Davis, it's your third year in the program. It's really your second season in the program. But year one, you were able to finish fifth. Year two, nobody sees you going backwards, especially with a young roster. And that says a lot about the impression that she made in her first season back in 2019 where they were just shy of qualifying for that postseason tournament in the Northeast Conference. Yeah, and I think it's so tough to, to measure the success in the first two or three years simply because the recruiting calendar is so advanced in the women's game. You need to get a few recruiting classes in there to really see which direction you're going with the players you're bringing in. That one just a bit too far for Conti. Daniel Goodhart from Germany, a freshman into the game. Ali Heckman steps off for St. Francis. You see her having a conversation with her head coach, Ellie Davis. Oh, that's nicely done. She nearly slipped her through there. Still the effort to stay on the ball. Little activity. In goal for Allie Lynch. Well, you're measuring everything, Qualk, and I think she will be very pleased with the response from her team in the second half. And I'll tell you what, too. One of the really important things that happened, you see a ball forward. We'll get to that in a second because something important may happen here. Ball is forward, and that is once again Emma Sawitz with an aggressive play to get the ball. She really set the right tone coming out of the locker room. She had a great save and a couple of deflections 
early in this second half that really stemmed the tide. Well, that's for me having the, the confidence to come off your line in those moments. Zero hesitation. As we saw in the first half, that first goal when Lyles was able to sneak in and dink it over the keeper. You know, zero hesitation in that moment. That doesn't occur. Some of it we should say does have something to do with Clemson. Malia Morris on the wing. Shot just high by Harper White. Clemson at the half had 16 shots, 11 on goal. That was their 11th and three, just three shots on goal. But when they have had shots on goal, this has happened. Yeah, there's one of those moments where she's able to come out, reads it well off her line. And there's Harper White trying her luck from about 25 yards. That's where I think St. Francis has been affected. They've been more compact centrally, forced the ball in the wide areas. When Clemson has had those opportunities, they're pulling the trigger from 25 yards. Seems like every deflection to Clemson has a player waiting. So even when you feel like you've done something right defensively, you don't get to keep possession because Clemson's got the right people coming in behind to fill. Yeah, those are those counter-pressing moments that you have to be so good in because really you're, you're most vulnerable when you're in possession. That transitional moment when your shape is big, you're spread out, then you lose possession, you have to win it back or either try to get very compact. Battle for it on the sideline. It'll be a throw in for the red flash. Is that McKenzie Cuff, Duff coming over? I in? believe it was. Duff with a strong challenge. Here's a chance, shot and saved. Scooped up by Lynch. She's got as many saves as the starter handcuffed now. You can see Harper White breaking up that play there. The ball just kind of squirted away from her, fell fortunately for a St. Francis forward. Nice touch there. Tigers with a chance moving forward. Little slip and a shot wide. Conti maybe could have had another touch or two to control herself there. Yeah, she really sold the fake there when she did the step over as the ball was coming through and cut it inside. Here's Conti one more time. Look at this, she steps over there. The player bites on it. Second touch, let her down. Nonetheless, terrific idea. Morris, Moeller, good communication there between Moeller and Morris. She gets forward. See Bourne Camp playing a little more advanced role here. A little bit too strong for Morris that time. And Megan Bourne Camp, two first half goals. One of two Tigers with multiple goals here. She and McKenna Morris. At this stage, the result in the clean sheet is the most important thing. But I couldn't begrudge Warren Camp if she's thinking hat trick. <laughs> you got to get them while you can. That's right. Especially to start a season. You try and improve on an Elite Eight appearance. You've made a statement as a team here tonight against St. Francis. Make a statement personally with a hat trick. You're right. I don't begrudge her one bit for looking at that. If she gets a little selfish in the final third, I'll give her a pass. Here's Malia Morris. Her sister's got two goals. Malia's got two assists, and that one batted around a bit. Can Clemson keep it? They cannot. 
I like the idea, though. There was nothing happening in the near post. She just tries to find him in the back. Here's a look at how things have gone. We mentioned Lyles and Menarek, the two freshmen. Born camp scored on two set pieces a minute apart. McKenna Morris came off the bench, got a couple, and then Wagner and Hirschfeld, the final two goals for Clemson. Six different players in all have scored the eight goals. Ooh. That could have been a handball there. Throw in for Clemson as we're under eight and a half to play. Yeah, Duff taking the throw in quickly, trying to keep the tempo high. Tigers will get a brief break. A super long one. They're back in action Sunday. Here's a run for it and offside the call. Fran Stables getting a little greedy. Fourth offside call against Clemson. And here's that upcoming schedule. You see Loyola on Sunday and then a fun and tough road trip in the SEC as they go to College Station in Athens. And then following that up with the trip to Athens. Yes, Charleston has certainly been there in the postseason. I think two years ago they put nine teams in the national tournament. You have three SEC opponents in a four-game stretch. If you count that South Carolina game after they host Charleston. And then it's an ACC play. And we know that ACC play, even though they may have gotten a more forgiving version of the schedule. Here's a replay here of that chance for St. Francis. Yeah, fell nicely for it, didn't it? Earned, this, earned themselves a corner. Yes, they did. Their first of the day. So it's been a huge advantage Clemson has held throughout the match. Now, for the viewers at home, that should technically be touching the line or inside that area. Nice job there by the keeper, Lynch. You could tell, mentioned a little bit of rain, the grass a little bit slick in spots. It's a good ball from Stables, isn't it? Beautiful to Morris. Shot looked like it was deflected some, and they will not say that. It'll be a goal kick with under six to play. And she just didn't quite get her hips around that. She had a really nice shot in the first half when she was able to pick out that far post. Fran Stables did a great job, though, of changing the point of attack quickly, putting Morris in that one-on-one -on -one situation. On the wing, opportunity here for the red flash. Well, for Clemson looking forward after tonight, I think it's going to serve them well on Sunday against Loyola. They'll have a full three days rest, and they're able to rest a lot of players given quality minutes, but they haven't played the majority of their team for 70 and 80 minutes. Moeller forward to Morris. Ball comes to Stables. There she is again. Exciting in space. Oh, well Out wide, done. beautiful. Morris with a chance offside. Just the slightest hesitation oh, there. I tell you, that was close, Quark. I love the creativity from Megan Bornkamp, though. She recognizes she's not going to be able to slip it through on the ground. Look how close this is. Oh, it might not even be Morris. Look up there. Yeah, in a situation like that, though, I don't know, well, 
and then Morse is off just at the last moment. The other player wouldn't have been deemed involved in the attack in that situation. But again, the creativity from Bourne Camp. Different type of penetrating pass. White, the give and go shot from the top, and that's deflected. That'll be a corner kick for the corner Tigers. Look, soccer is one of the most unjust sports in the world, okay? But if there were any justice, <laughs> You know, I'm sure the Clemson faithful would love to see Harper White get on the scoreboard. I think she's been terrific tonight. See if she can do it here. Corner kick number 12. This will be Renee Guion. They have found Bourne Camp twice on corner. She is there. And they find her again. It's up in the air. Who's got it? And we've got a handball, I believe. Looked like an arm went up. It looked like either a handball or someone challenged there. Yeah, it may have just been a foul. Didn't. Played the player, not the ball. Opportunity goes by the wayside there for Clemson. The good news, Eddie Vrablonski's team has created plenty of opportunities and cashed in a host of them. Feels nice, too, to be out here and crowd here in the stands, the nice crowd. Some distance, but not mandated, so to speak, and nice energy here at Historic Riggs Field after a season that I think we all agree was carried out to the fullest extent that we could, but was different. It was very different. And I tell you, with, with Classes here starting in Clemson yesterday. It does feel like we're beginning to return to a sense of normalcy. That's good a good ball from Bourne Camp. Tigers find a nightcap here. Opportunity into the middle. Can they get it in? No, but it's still alive. Still alive. Hit it one time. Let's see, just over the top. I know the crowd wanted a foul there right at the mouth of the goal. What do you think, Kevin? I don't think so. Was that? Looked like she just mistouched it. I think that was Conti that was. Born Camp does a good job of knocking this down for Conti. I think she got spun around a bit. Unselfish there. I don't think there's enough there for a penalty. I agree with you. Be time for one more regrouping. That may be it. 40 seconds left. Heck of a start for Clemson here. And a lot to grow on, particularly in the second half for St. Francis. Yeah, absolutely. And young lady there, saw which I think has been outstanding the second half. Made a couple of big time saves. Yeah, I'd be kind of surprised after the performance she's had since the half if she doesn't get another crack at it. Yeah, her decisiveness and coming off the line. And I don't even think he can hang the goal on the Hirschfeld goal on her. She was in a one-on-one -on -one situation and, and still made a good effort there. Four, three. Two, one. Well, the Tigers send the home crowd home happy. It's not been in doubt for quite some time, and the Tigers made sure that it was quite decisive. An 8-0 victory.